So there's a new strain wave gear or harmonic drive mount available and it is, it is, wait what? The ZWAM5, what is going on? I've already reviewed this mount on the channel. It's an excellent mount. Why am I showing this again? No, it's not because anything bad happened to the previous one. Uh, it's simply because there is a new version of the AM5 mount that has been dubbed the AM5N, although I'm not sure whether it completely replaces the older version of the mount or it's a new version that will be sold in parallel. I do believe it's the former. Uh, Japanese websites already have the full specs for this mount and a few things have changed. So we'll go through them in a moment. And the Japanese websites, they call this uh, version of the mount Maina Chenji for minor change. And this is the same term that they use with stuff like cars. When you have the same model of a car that gets refreshed after a couple of years, it's a minor change. The old version of the car is no longer being sold, only the new one is available. And I suspect this is the case with the uh, ZWAM5 that effectively is evolving. So first, let's get it out of the box so we can have a good look at this mount. So the box itself, it looks very much like the usual box for the ZWAM5, except that now we have a nice, a new case in it. So this is no longer the uh, old case of the ZWM5. It's a new one that looks a lot like the C-Stars case. So it's now kind of a, a hard shell type of uh, case rather than soft shell like we had before. So let's get it out. Ooh, ZWM5. And there's a manual and some paper with it. We'll have a look in a moment. So this is how the case looks like. If you're familiar with the ZWC Star, this is exactly like the ZWC Star case, just a bit bigger. So we no longer have the awesome artwork of the uh, original ZWAM5, but now it is a kind of a hard shell. And I personally really liked the case of the C Star. And I don't mind that the ZWAM5 now has a case like that. I think a lot of people like hard cases. I do have a soft spot for uh, soft cases, but that's probably just me. Anyway, let's look inside. Is there anything that is visually completely different from the original ZWM5? Let's have a quick look. By the way, uh, before I go any further, this video is just an unboxing and looking at the mount and see what's new in there. I don't have the weather to actually test the mount under the stars. Uh, for quite a bit and you know it sounds like it would be useless. I've already tested the original AM5 under the stars. Surely, surely nothing has changed with the new model in terms of like tracking performance or payload capacity. Well first stop calling me Shirley and second yes yes it has. We have better periodic error and we also have a higher payload without counterweights. Anyway the mount is here. Let me take it out. So we have first a USB cable very important, but it is USB-A to USB-C and we'll know the reason why in a moment. We have another USB cable, which is the standard one, the one that uh, we get with most mounts and with the original AM5. We also get the remote control cable together with the remote control. Now, talking about the remote control, um, the Wi-Fi for the ZWAM5N, that new version is still linked to the remote control. So if you want to control the mount via Wi-Fi, you need to have the remote control con connected. It's not in body. I was hoping that it would be in body for this uh, minor change, but it is not the case. But now let's go to the pièce de résistance. Ah, here we go. And here it is. Look at this beauty. We have still the really nice artwork. It might no longer be on the case. It is still on the mount. I'm very, very relieved to see that. And what changes do I see immediately? Well, there is, I don't know if you can see it, but here there's a little uh, tiny button uh, with BT for Bluetooth because now, just like the ZWAM3 does, the mount has in-body Bluetooth. 
And I've already tested the mount uh, against that using my smartphone and I was able to connect to it via Bluetooth and control it via the ZW app. What else is changing there? Otherwise, we have like the standard USB port. We have the auto guide uh, port, which you should never ever use. We have the hand controller input port, and then we have the DC input part. Okay, simple enough. Now let's look at both sides. ZW, AM5. Wait a second, where is the uh, saddle, the small finder saddle that we had on the side of the M5? It is gone, it is no longer there, and this is a very good thing because it, there used to be a, a, a saddle here where people would put their uh, ASI Air. So with the old AM5, I could take uh, my ASI Air and put it, pop, slide it into the saddle. It was awesome until cables and uh, tolerances on the mount would rip the ASI Air off, break things, and it was horrible. So obviously, ZW has learned and they've decided to remove the uh, saddle. I think that's a good thing. Talking about saddles, we have the same uh, dual saddle as we had before, no change there, except here we see some new things. We see a tiny USB-C port and we see a DC output port. So what's happening here is that you can control the mount via this uh, USB-C port here. So if you have your scope and then your ASI Air is like mounted on top of the scope, you have your ASI Air connected directly to the, that USB-C port and you control the mount via that port. And I've tested it with the ASI Air, controlling the mount directly via the USB port here and it worked without issue whatsoever. So now instead of having to go all the way to the port, the USB port here, you can simply use the uh, USB port here. This is much better for cable management. So this is already like, this is weird because it feels almost like ZW's answers to the uh, EM31 Pro that I reviewed on the channel very recently. And it's a good thing. More competition means progress. Always good for us. There's a, another thing that I mentioned, it's the power output. So the input to the mount is still here. But once you put in the input, this becomes a power output and then you can power your ZW ASI Air or your Melee Quieter for c or your Astro PC Pro, whatever you use to control your equipment. Obviously, from ZW's point of view, it's gonna be the ASI Air. By the way, before I go any further, a quick disclaimer, this was not provided to me by ZW. This was provided to me by Agina Astro. <laughs> I love Agina Astro. I mean, I've been a long time affiliate of, uh, of theirs. And I think a lot of my subscribers also love Agina Astro. Any equipment that's available there, I have the links via Agina Astro in the description. And today is no different. This was sent to me on loan, right? I would need to return it at the end. Although I've just heard from Agina that I might get to keep it. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that even though I'm not receiving the mount from ZW, I might be getting compensated for it. I'm not sure. I don't really care, to be honest. I just want for now for this video. It's not a review. It's just showing you the differences and what we see. So going back to the uh, differences, there's some more stuff in there that is uh, different. I don't remember if this, this was the case with the old mount, but now there's a little uh, hex wrench that is hidden in the body of the mount. It's like, there's, I think there's a magnet too. Yes, there's a magnet that keeps it in place. This is super cool. <laughs> oh, this is cool. I think there is, is it? Or is it just like mechanical? No, there's a magnet. There's a magnet that keeps, keeps this hex wrench in, and this is to be able to adjust the angle. So there are two ranges of angles available. There's like zero to 60 degrees uh, latitude, and I believe 30 to 90 degrees uh, latitude, and you're able to change that using this. It's really cool because that reminds me of the uh, Ioptron mounts like the Sam 60, Sam 70 that also hide a sort of wrench within the mount body and I feel like uh, some inspiration was taken here. But I'm all for inspiration taken cross brands. And what else uh, do we have here that changes? Well, the uh, al alignment mechanism, the azimuth for the polar alignment is not just those two bolts. There are no longer locking knobs for the uh, azimuth. So Adamus will simply be like tightening the knobs against the central rod and that's it. The uh, altitude, as far as I can tell, hasn't changed. I can still change it 
while the mount is actually locked. So everything seems to be very standard, but it's nice not to have the azimuth uh, lock anymore. I agree that having the two screws basically uh, on the central pole there, whatever we call it, pe peg, I guess, the central peg is more than enough to keep it in place. Okay, so now there's another change that is not so positive. It is the weight of the mount. And actually, I didn't even know about it before, but when I took the mount for the first time out of the case, I took it out and I'm like, this feels heavier than before. And maybe it was just, you know, my imagination. I've been, you know, reviewing a ton of mounts that are lighter than the M5. I've been review reviewing like the UMI 17 Lite, that's around four kilograms. I've been reviewing the EM31 Pro, which is also around four kilograms. So maybe it's just the shock of this, but the original EM5 weighed uh, five kilograms. This is 10% more at 5.5 kilograms. It's not a big deal, not a big deal at all. Um, Although I can, I can see scenarios where, you know, you want to take that on a carry-on and those additional 500 grams, they're really annoying potentially, but you know, it's not a big deal. I, I think in like day-to-day -day life, it's not going to be a problem whatsoever, but just something to be uh, aware of. And another change, and this one is very positive, is the payload without counterweight. So as usual, we have the slot for the counterweight shaft at the bottom here, but now the payload without counterweight is no longer 13 kilograms, it is 15 kilograms, just like the EM31 Pro. And that is really exciting because now we have access to the full torque of this Type 17 harmonic drive or strain wave gear drive that we have in right ascension. We still have, you know, the, the usual stuff, the homing sensors, the brake and RA, all that kind of stuff. It's unchanged from the AM5. It's just basically better in all respects. It's better except the weight. Otherwise, it's just better in all re respects. And of course, I will need to test the mount under the stars to be absolutely sure that, you know, everything is, is good with it. And I forget, there's actually <laughs> one more thing that is a very important change and that I alluded to at the start of the, the video. I almost forgot. Let me get the... Um, periodic error report and show you. But before that, if you like having access to this video, like uh, as soon as the ZWM5N new version gets uh, released, you may want to go down below, click on that like button. It really helps the channel out and the video out. And while you're at it, if you're new to the channel, uh, you may consider subscribing, that subscribe button, bell icon. Obviously, I'll have to do a follow-up with this mount, probably with my dual scope Frankenscope, which will push it to its limits. So if you don't want to miss that, it's the subscribe button. And of course, I'll have links down below if you want to purchase the new version of the ZWAM5 or anything else from Agena Astro, you can go down below and click on any of the links I have down below. It actually helps me out at no cost to you, so it's very much appreciated. If you want to support me more directly for all of the work that I'm doing for these videos, you may consider joining my Patreon. I have links down in the description or joining the channel as a member. It's the join button next to that subscribe button. You guys, uh, I say it every time and I mean it. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome and this channel would no longer exist without you. And with that said, let's go back to the final difference that we have and I need, where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Where did, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, it's below the case. There we go. Whew, whew. Okay, so what do we have in here? We have uh, a standard, you know, quick start guide. Uh, so with like hard to use Bluetooth now that's in body or hard to use the Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, I've already tested the Bluetooth, it works. I've tested the USB port on the saddle, it works. Uh, and there's the QR codes for the manual, except the manual still has the old AM5 information. So I don't know when they'll update the manual to the new one. Maybe I'm just a bit early, but this is not what is really in interesting. What is really interesting is this. And in particular, look at the numbers, max and min periodic error, 7.8 arc seconds or three arc seconds, depending on which, at which point of the cycle you're on. My last AM5 was around 16 arc seconds. So we have a huge difference. And now I'm actually looking at the Japanese website and it says, uh, yes, periodic motion, say no. So it says, yeah, the periodic motion, which in Japanese is the periodic error, uh, has gotten better. It went from plus, 
plus minus 20 arc seconds to plus minus 10 arc seconds. So there we go, we have an actual visible enhancement, like the graph that you will get will have better results, which should in theory make the mount easier to guide. So we'll see of course if that's really the case, but I'm really excited to see it's a minor change, but the payload change, the small quality of life improvements, the uh, periodic error improvements, all of that is a great thing because it shows that ZW is still innovating. There's competition that also tries to innovate next to it. This is a golden age of new mounts and of those new strain wave gear mounts. I am so freaking hyped for this. Now, if ZW could also do a minor change or maybe even a major change to their tripod, <laughs> then we'd be even better off. Like, come on ZW, you can take inspiration from the Japanese tripod I reviewed. But okay, that's it for this video, but it's definitely not it for this mount. This mount will go through some torture tests in the near future, where, or maybe the far future, depending on the weather, the, the next couple of weeks look horrible. But I am so hyped. I'm so happy to see this progress. I am so happy to see competition in the hobby. I am so happy to see companies like ZW innovating. And I'm so happy to see good resellers or dealers like Agina also selling all of the equipment in one place. And I haven't said it enough in the video, but I'd like to thank Agina Astro for sending this mount to me. And again, should you wish to purchase this, I'll have the links down in the description. But with that, I think that's enough of me like waxing lyrical on this uh, new mount. So I want to thank you so much for watching. And don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars or the clouds or the rain or you know, anything you like uh, for that matter. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.